G'day, welcome to Bootlosophy. My name is Tech. I'm recording on uh, Wajuk country in Perth, Western Australia, and I recognize the traditional custodians of this land. Now, I've received this parcel, so it's going to be an unboxing, and this parcel is from Bandung, Indonesia. So all you boot lovers out there will understand what it means when I say Bandung, Indonesia. <laughs> So here's this box from Bandung, which I've received. It's totally well wrapped. This is a box from Santalum, uh, handmade boot makers in Indonesia. Let's get into it. So let's start opening up this incredibly well wrapped box. I mean, it's wrapped in plastic as well as the box itself. So let me just get rid of the padded plastic first. I don't think there's going to be any damage in postage with this wrapping. Now, let me talk a little about Santalum. It's one of the uh, most well-respected and slightly, I think, older bootmakers in Bandung, Indonesia. Bandung is the center of Indonesian bootmaking, uh, with a lot of tradition that they inherited from their Dutch um, uh, colonial masters and uh, have carried on to this day. So that's the Santalum box, quite an impressive little logo, Santalum on there. And let's open it up and see. Nice waxed paper, uh, shoe bags, there's one on top, Santalum uh, Ferma Spiritu. Don't know what that means in Latin, but I'll have a look at it. Established 2010, so it is one of the older uh, bootmakers in Bandung. They are handmade, made-to-order boots. Two types of laces, round cotton waxed and flat cotton waxed. Oh, actually they come with three laces because on the boot itself are some leather laces. So these boots are wrapped in plastic. Another shoe bag. I'll take them both out of the plastic and then show you the boots. So this is their Milestone model, uh, a Capto service boot. Uh, you can basically use the basic model and design it in any way you like. So in this case, I chose a local Indonesian veg tan leather and I asked them for a rough out uh, uh, rough out makeup of that Indonesian leather. Um, I wanted this to be as locally produced as possible to help out the Indonesian bootmakers. Uh, the third lace they come in is rawhide. And as you can see, the smooth side of the leather is on the inside, and this is the rough out. Uh, and it's quite a rough rough out. Uh, because they're made to order, you choose the basic design, and then you can really change it up. So in this case, I asked for a partially structured toe, because I'd like that to collapse over time. Uh, you can choose the hardware, how many eyelets, how many hooks, what types of eyelets or hooks. I asked for a Veltschon uh, design construction, which is a, a form of a stitch down construction, 270 degrees Veltschon. I chose the threads and I asked for it to be red threads, just to show a bit of uh, uh, contrast. So you can basically, uh, once you've got the basic design, choose almost any type of uh, uh, makeup that you like based on the boot. I asked for a uh, Dr. Sol cork half sole, which is the first Dr. Sol sole I've ever had. So that's going to be an interesting tryout. Um, you can see it's a double leather midsole, one, two pieces of leather there. Uh, and the actual welt shown itself. And I'm not sure this is actually a very thin welt. The heels are stacked leather, and then you get the Dr. Sol um, cork. Um, the construction, as far as I can see, is pretty good. Uh, the stitching on this very rough Indonesian rough out is pretty good. The sole is hand stitched on. This is machine stitched but guided by hand. 
And the other boot also looks pretty impressive. I think some of the nap on the rough out is quite nappy, but I, I think it will eventually sort of settle down and burnish with wear and use. Brass tacks, tack on the edge of the uh, sole there. The stitching on the sole is very impressive. All right, so let's get these on foot, try them on for fit and sizing and comfort. So here's the try on. Um, they're partly gusseted up to the eyelet, one to three fourth eyelet. Uh, I asked for a seven inch boot, so it needed an extra a hook at the top. Um, let's try it. So the process uh, includes first contacting them which is not the easiest thing in the world because they don't have a website and the contact is usually made through uh, direct messaging uh, on Instagram and while I'm talking I'm pulling on these rawhide laces they are very thin and I'm not sure they're going to last that long so I'm probably going to uh, change to one of those cotton laces that they also give you Yes, on first contact, you tell them what you might be interested in. Then there's an exchange of uh, different photos and talks about style. And you um, uh, get to do the design. They'll ask you to uh, take some drawings of your foot and some certain measurements. And then they'll tell you sort of what size it is. These fit all right. Um, I think they're actually a bit wide for me. But with thicker socks, I think that might be fine proper boot socks. Let's try the other one on. So we ended up at a size, European size 41, which is kind of my normal European size. And I know that I've bought, say, Echo boots uh, and other European style boots in that size. But these, I have to say, once they're on foot, feel actually slightly bigger than what I'm used to as a, uh, as a, um, size 41. The leather is an Indonesian leather, veg tanned, and it doesn't feel as tough as other veg tan leathers, but it's in fact quite supple. I do quite like this. Um, so after you've completed your discussions about design and so on, uh, they ask you to pay 50% up front, and it's promised to take 10 weeks but in this case, there was a religious holiday in the middle, so it ended up being about eight weeks. I might just roll up my cuff so you can see the top of the boot. So a 16-week turnaround for these. Uh, you know, that's quite a long wait. And in the middle of it was a bit of radio silence, which A, annoyed me, and B, really worried me and stressed me out. And I think you have to be prepared for that because they definitely do not have a back office system to keep you informed. Yeah, these fit pretty good, but um, I think they are wide and I'm going to have to wear them with uh, thicker socks. The leather is nice and supple. I can feel it does need breaking in. Uh, the veg tan midsole is pretty tough and I can also feel that needs breaking in. There is a bit of a push up in here. I'm not quite sure why. I can feel it pushing up to my foot. That may be the shank and the build up of the arch support. All right. And as usual, what I'll do is wear these for a while and then I'll bring you a uh, longer term review. So there you go guys, my unboxing and initial thoughts about these boots from Santalum. Uh, I do think that the leather 
is a little rough and ready, but I, I chose Indonesian leather because I wanted to keep everything as local for them as possible. Um, but I think it will actually break in quite nicely. It feels supple, uh, so it feels like it needs breaking in, but it will be a supple journey. They are a bit broader than um, what I'm expecting, despite my measurements. Uh, so I'm not quite sure why that is. They are not hugely long, they're just a wider fit really. So I think I just need to be reconciled to wear these with thicker socks. Um, so as usual, what I'll do is I'll wear these for three to six months and then I'll bring you a longer term review about the boot maker, uh, what I can tell about the leather, the Dr. Soul uh, soles, uh, and how I find them fitting and, and if they're worth the value. Until then, take care and I'll see you soon.